Jesse Lappin. I am the collage artist and musician based in Brooklyn. This is Brandon Wise Carver. Hey, what up? Who are you? I'm a dude. I'm a virtual reality painter. Wow. That's weird, I know. No, I dig it. And uh, you're tuned in to Lucky Time Explosion. Wow. Boop, 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 boop. Explosion noises. Yeah, Arr. big explosions, impressive explosions. So, yeah, just to let everyone know, we are recording here at Sola Studio in Manhattan. Yup. We're in Manhattan, the Flatiron District, around 24th and Park. This is correct. And we do a lot of different things here, but um, one of the cool things that we have is a gallery space, and we have some events coming up. Yeah, aren't you planning some stuff for later uh, next month? I am. Tell um, me about it. So What's coming up, Morgan? I'm going to let you know. It's uh, World Collage Day is coming up in um, May. And officially, wait, wait, wait. There's a World Collage Day? There's a World Collage Day. It was put together by a group of people that have a publication, and it is titled Collage with a K. It's K-O-L-A-J. And um, I actually attended their first International Collage Summit in New Orleans in Look 2017. Yeah, it was a really cool experience. What the heck? A collage mm. summit. What happens at a collage summit? So it was the first one to ever happen, and they had, you know, galleries set up in the area supporting some of the collage artists in that area from New Orleans. Um, they're actually based in New Orleans and in Toronto, I believe. When did they uh, start? Like, what year was Collage founded, the magazine? I am not 100% sure. Hmm. Probably somewhere around, like, 2015, maybe? I could be wrong. Nice. And so it's what, run wait. by someone named Rick Cassini. Okay, Rick, shout out to Rick. Yeah, and he's he's really in the forefront of um, collage education. He's doing a lot right now. That I, I'll have to get more updates, but they have a lot of things shaking right now. Sweet. What are we doing for Collage Day? So we have a show that I am putting together. Um, I won't release the names yet. I'm going to keep it secret, but I'm um, mm. going to get a bunch tricky, of tricky. great local uh, collage artists from the five boroughs, and uh, we're going to do it right here at Sola. So I'm really excited, and that's going to be, I believe, the second Saturday of May is officially International Collage Day. Nice, nice. It's a recognized holiday. Are you still uh, taking submissions? Is it, like, open? Can If people are listening and they... Do collage? Could they submit to you? For this one, I'm going to take the reins. I'm going to collage, or uh, I'm going to collage the people into the show. Yes. You're going to cut people out and you're going to stick them together them onto the gallery wall. That's right. No, I'm going to curate. Uh, That's this, a yes. This time around, Send I'm going to curate. Send your shit in, I guess. Um, but uh, in the You've future. You've been doing a lot of curation. Oh, yes. No, I've been curating since 2008. Uh, what was the last show you did? It was um, with like, Dibson, Gibby Haynes was in it and... Yes, I well the show that I was in, we did it at um, Basin Gallery, which is located in Red Hook, Brooklyn, a little out there, but um, it was me, Gibby Haynes, and um, Kip Malone, and uh, Gibby Haynes is the lead singer of uh, Butthole Surfers, and Kip is from TV on the radio, and that was a really cool. cool show. That's cool. Um, but you know, even as an artist uh, on a show with people who have you know fairly well known names. A lot of people didn't show up. I don't know if it was because if it, it was in Red Hook or we promoted well. well but I mean, it's, to it's, be fair, Red Hook's like really hard to get to. <laughs> it is. And even if you get up the subway, you get Red a long walk. So I bet last time I went to Red Hook, I was at um, the the crab place. You know what I'm talking about? It's like it's called like Red Hook or Brooklyn Crab. I think it's called. I've and never been there, no, but I know there? it's good for the uh, the seafood down there. Yeah, no, they have like uh, two stories, and the entire top dining area is just lined with hot sauces. Mm. Like a million different kinds, and they give you a oyster with every uh, bloody martini. We're going to have to go down there bloody and make some fish. <laughs> nice. It's cool. Yeah, we're excited for that. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff coming up here at the collective as well. So Solus Studio is like a full production house here. We do photography, fine art. Uh, digitization, fine art printing, but we have a lot of artists who um, also come together for community events. If you're one of them and you're listening, we are doing um, Crit Club once a month now. So that is going to be the first Wednesday of every month. We're going to gather here at the studio and we're just going to look at each other's work and kind of give feedback to each other. I kind of think that's really important for artists to start like, you know, talking in person and like showing their work to each other. It's very important. And it doesn't happen very much, I feel like now, because, no. you know, we're all in line all the time. I'm terminally online. I'm really, really bad. But yeah, I took a mental break this yeah. past week. I need to just step away for a hot second. <clears throat> really? 
Yeah. From, from what, social media or just the internet in general? I mean, I mean, since I was a young man, I've been sitting in front of the computer. You like, were a young nonstop. man? I, at one time, I was a young man. I don't believe but, it. Uh, yeah, I used to have a BBS, a bulletin board system. I don't know if anybody knows what that is, but basically, <laughs> this is before World Wide Web. I mean, it still exists, but basically, I had to convince my parents to get me my own separate phone line, and that was a big deal. And it was Direct Connect. People would just log onto my computer. There was like a forum. There were text-based adventure games. Oh, God, Bound I love those. Alight, Ursurper. I mean, the, the list goes on and on. And uh, everyone from my town had a BBS, and there was a lot of weird drama going on. Yeah, the weird drama on the BBS. It was kind of like yeah, next, the yeah. next door of, of the day. Well, the thing was... Are you on next door? Next door is really funny. No, I don't know that one. No, next door is like an app where if you live in a neighborhood, you can like be on this app specific to your neighborhood. And so I'm, you know, uh, you'll see people posting stuff like, what was that bright light in the sky yesterday at 2 p.m.? What is this app called? It's called Next Door. So it's like a weird <clears throat> version of a citizen app. Yeah, a kind of. For it, aliens like, and monsters. <laughs> not just for aliens, but for like, you know, petty neighborhood shit. So it's kind of like boomers like complaining about their neighbors. And, oh. and people sometimes so it's this nice. is people yelp now this this is basically yell for others no no it's not yelp for others it's like it's like um it's like a neighborhood um community meeting all the time you know what i mean it's like as if there was like a little township meeting for the lower east side or for the village or upper east side or wherever you live and it's like just constantly chatter about what's going on in the neighborhood restaurants opening closing uh, whatever in fact maybe we should start putting our art shows on there Maybe yeah. people come from there. I no, know. that's an awesome idea. I've never heard of this, but it just, you know, keep yeah. it coming, I suppose. Yeah, next door. I'm excited for the collage show, though. You might, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see what you who you pick oh, and yeah. uh, what yeah. the work you're going to present is going to be. I think we're going to be somewhere around anywhere between 20 to 25 artists, obviously smaller works. But and we're doing uh, a collage party, too, right? Yeah, we make a we do, collage we're going to start doing more live collage shows here where people can get together. It's very therapeutic. It's, it's good for me. It's just reasons. fun. It is fun. Like sit around and, and actually uh, just cut stuff out. My favorite part of the collage parties we throw is like going and looking for all the magazines to cut up. It's it's a hunt. And yeah. and that's that's the fun part too. I mean, everyone has a different way of creating collage. I myself are analog and I you know, I find books on the streets, I find old publications, uh, I do a little bit of digital. It's easier to do that when a job has to be done quickly. But I'm mostly analog, and the hunt for the images is really one of the most yeah. enjoyable parts of the whole uh, you're, medium. You're super analog, too. Like, you you take little squares of tape. Oh, yeah. You know, like, your stuff is actually can be reassembled and pulled back apart. Well, That's I, wild to me. I, I never understood why you do that. The reason that I don't use glue is because I may want to make a, a change in the piece. And by using the tape that I utilize, which is acid free, I'm able to go backwards sometimes. It's a little bit more forgiving. But I definitely take the time to make sure that I protect the work some. I use something called de acid uh, vacation spray. Mm. And what that does is created by a company called, whoops, a company called Talus. And what it does is they say it neutralizes the properties to give it more stability throughout the years to retain its colors and stuff like that. What so, happens if I ingest this spray? I'm not sure. I haven't tried that. I've done Windex, and uh, you it haven't was tried. rather delicious. You drink a lot uh, of Windex I at the office. tell anybody else to, to spray Windex in their mouths. It's just a me thing. Please, please don't do that at home, kids. Uh, next next time we go live, I'll bring my bottle. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm interested. It's part in of my lunch. You eat Huel, and I drink uh, Windex. <laughs> this explains so much, so much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, so say again when the collage show is coming up, so people can mark it on their calendar. So that is. Let me just double check. It's the, you said the second Wednesday or the it's second the Saturday. Second Saturday. So oh, I remember see. this March 11th. Oh goodness gracious! Isn't it? It's March 11th. Let's double check here. Do, when do, 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 double check international it is you're right do, 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 do. Wait, or when is it? i'm gonna be right collage day you usually are let's see if i'm right so if you are a collage artist uh definitely send something out to morgan if you don't know he started the brooklyn collage collective uh in 2010 yeah that 2013. Close. 13, 2013. Uh, so it's been around for a minute, almost a decade. You are correct. A little it bit over a decade. May. So it is the Ooh. second Saturday of May, which is. So yeah, Brooklyn Collage Collective has been going for uh, oh, now 11 years, right? 
that's crazy to think about. It is. It's it's transformed. It evolved many times, and we have plans that we're going to shake it up a little bit in the future. We won't say anything yet, but be prepared because uh, Brooklyn Collage Collective is coming back. Yeah, I'm excited With for vengeance. that. With vengeance. With vengeance. So it is the 11th. May 11th is the day, and that is when Solus is going to be hosting this very special collage yeah. show. Oh, there is some more news uh, out of the studio here as well. Um, the starting next week, uh, I believe, uh, not this week, obviously, but next week, we're going to have, um, we're going to have a quiet lunch in the house. So we're doing, um, a collab with quiet lunch magazine, my friend Akeem, uh, I sometimes write for them. So I do also art writing aside from messing around in VR. Uh, and he's going to come for, um, March for, uh, I think it's international women's month. Nice. I think that's what that is. So it's uh, he's going to be doing a show with four women, two shows with four women, eight women total, uh, female artists only for one week. And he'll be actually sitting here and we'll be gallery. We'll have gallery hours so you can come visit us here uh, at 117 East 24th Street uh, from noon to five uh, from the fourth to the eighth. And then again later in the last week of March as well. So we'll have some open gallery hours. Come visit. Come say hi. See some work. Uh, and meet Akeem. He's a really cool dude. Nice. Thank you for letting us know. Yeah. There's a lot. There's so much stuff coming up. I want to, you know, I always make sure that we're announcing it all the time. I've yeah, got, we're we're loading up. We're we're pushing ourselves. We're working real hard. I'm, I swear. I'm getting really excited for um, Crit Club again, just because like that's one of my favorite things. I hope that more of the members of the studio will come out uh, for Crit Club because when we have a good crowd, uh, it can be really enriching. It can like kind of get a lot of interesting feedback. I think yeah. feedback's important. It's like a free focus group. If you're on Discord too, we have a Solus channel that you can join to find out more. Right? You do have to be a member to be on the oh. on the Discord. We don't have a public Discord. It's super secret, and you blew it. You told everybody about it. Shh. All the millions of people Shite. watching. <laughs> well, listen, people, sign up to Solus. It's an awesome artist community. Whatever you pay in could be utilized for future prints, framing, anything. So it's a really cool deal. And plus, you get the opportunity to hang out and meet other really cool artists so yeah that's really uh, what i want to do with it like um you know i'm most known for my time with uh, brian shevelin and con artist collective right and that's how solace kind of started was con artist collective's community was dispersed in like 2020 uh around the time of the pandemic due to multiple reasons and we started something similar here at solace uh, so the idea is that artists can pay a small dues only here Instead of paying five bucks a month just to be on a mailing list or get on the Discord, uh, any money you spend in can be used on like business cards. So if you're an artist and you need, say, a business card once a year, that's sixty-five bucks. That's a five dollar a month membership, and at the end of the year, that all that money is used for whatever you need to do. It's a good deal. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of it's a, a no-brainer good deal. That's what I'm. That's what I want it to be. Is uh, you know, whatever the, your budget is, we're gonna help you out uh, and do what we can for whatever money you can put away uh, and let you take your time with it. You know, I know artists are crazy busy. They'll pop off uh, out of the country for a year at a time. This you is know, true. and then they'll pop back in. So anyway, it's a really cool community. Uh, it's and something I think we need more of in the city. So I'm really happy to be doing anything like that in New York because it can be kind of lonely. When yeah. there's a there's like these clear echelons, right? It's like oh, there's the people at the very tippy top. Well, who are in like one so of the like, cool things about you know I I've been working at Solus now for a little bit now, and um, you know sales are actually made at these shows. Yeah, that doesn't happen too often, so it's nice to see. And uh, you know, mm. we have buyers. Yeah, I guess we have so. collectors. We're building up a list. You know, we're it's doing happening. It. Well, you don't you know you don't sell work unless you show it, and uh, you know you got to show. And that's one of the things we do all the time is we don't ever charge artists to show, which I think is really cool because there is a lot of that in the city. We want you to be successful. Come over and hang out and we can make artworks. Yeah. You know, you talk about gallery, uh, vanity galleries for a second. Sure. I feel like that's a thing that maybe a lot of people don't realize is uh, you have like your artist friends who are struggling to make it and they're out there doing shows and sometimes they've been like tricked into paying for it. I never uh, pay to play. I've done it before in the past. <clears throat> I've done it before in the past but, and actually enjoyed it, but it's a, it does feel like a scam, you know? It does. It does. It's, I think it kind of is. I mean, I've been curating for a long time and I've never done pay to play. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's still difficult to sell art. Selling art is an art form. 
Yep. There's a serious psychology behind it. And, you know, like I said, I've been doing it for years and for a very long time, it just turned out to be a big art party. And very rarely do you make sales at an art party. So, you know. Right. But you can make memories and connections there as well. This is true. And I think that one of the things that's interesting that I've experienced with dealing with artists and selling art and that whole situation, the whole relationship with money to art, uh, sometimes it feels like it can spoil it a little bit. Like some of the best artists I know and some of the ones who are poised to do the most success, I think, are, are the ones who have kind of like given up on the concept of making money with their art. I know that's like a weird back. It's backwards. You know, there's different kinds. There's like the hustler artist whose work is all about money and is like really focused on making money. And then there's the people who they know they're going to be making art anyway. They've been doing it for years. A lot of times people like David or people like um, uh, Sean Ritz, who we just had an amazing show for. Uh, Sean Ritz is a commercial illustrator, right? Yeah, he's so amazing. He, he's had this long, successful career doing commercial illustration, and now he's just like doing what he wants to do with it. Uh, and I think actually that's still up on the website. If you're hearing this, you can go check out Studio slash gallery. And there's actually a virtual reality tour that we made with him. You can go check the show out there. I think my In microphone is trying to bite me. The yeah. microphone's trying to beat me up. Yeah. Well, it's because you're a sucker. It knows you're He's a like, sucker. He's like, wise guy, eh? I'm like... It's because you didn't tighten this knob enough. I'll tighten your knob. Oh, my God. Stop making so much damn noise. I know. And you're giving me... Gosh. now. I, no, okay, now we got to edit. Fuck. <laughs> I was no, so no, close no, to no. not having to edit this episode, but Morgan's got to make all this fucking noise. Okay, I'll just sit over here closer to Brennan. Oh, That's geez. a sexy thing. Oh, man. Um, so, yeah, other than that, you know, we're going to be doing this show more often now. We're going to be doing it in the mornings. We have a special guest named Craig Allen that's going to be joining us on Wednesday. I'm super excited because he is an awesome dude. And he has his own podcast, right? He does, yeah. He, he's on XM Radio, actually. So um, they're doing a new show there, which is really cool. Craig's funny because, like, he's a dude I've known forever as a gallery goer, but, like, a dude who would come to the gallery and drink all of the beer and stuff. And I would like kind of give him shit about it because he seemed like there to party and not into the art. Uh, but then he's very charming and <laughs> he started coming by and like bringing his own booze and just like we just chatted for a long time and I've just known him forever. Yeah, he's uh, a good dude. And he, he's a really funny guy. So it'll be interesting to have him uh, back on Wednesday. But yes. Lucky Time Explosion is now going to be thrice weekly. We're going to be a little shorter episodes. We're going to be doing about like 30 minutes uh, instead of a full hour. Uh, and we're going to be doing it every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday before me and Morgan clock in for work here at Solace. Yay. Yay. More. I mean, you're a morning person. I am not actually a morning person. It depends on the day. Does it? It does. I'm never a morning person, kind of. It, it, it depends on what's going on today. <laughs> no, I... I I'm, I'm, I, I can get up in the morning. I yeah. mean, most of my life, my my uh, jobs have been, when I used to work for my father laying flooring, yes. I used to wake up at like 5 a.m. That was insane. Oh, that's a little brutal. I don't miss that. Yeah. I mean, the drive to work was 45 minutes, so. Right. I was going to say that, you know, we don't have a guest today now that we're doing this uh, in the morning because uh, the artists don't get up in time to come here at 10 and record. No, not too many I'm people joking. want. I mean, the older you get, the less you want to wake up. Is that that's that's me at least? But, <laughs> I'm, uh, just, I'm just teasing. I'm still pushing. It's like that pushing stereotype. for happiness in this life. I'm I'm gonna keep on trying. You keep trying. <laughs> yeah. That's so sad. Don't do it. just Little let bit. everybody know that you're happy. It's okay. Yeah, this is just lie to is, them. Look at, look into time. the camera and lie. No, I'm happy. I'm that's so good. fucking happy. Ah, oh my goodness gracious. Well, I'm happy to be here talking to you, everyone. It's fun. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of interesting characters. We know a lot of interesting people yeah, totally. in the art world. So we're going to have some cool guests coming up. We may have puppets. We may have, you That's know, a threat. We might. It's a promise. A yeah. threat and a promise. We're going to have some puppets on the show. I'm excited. Maybe bring some action figures and play with those. Yeah, you know? and you know, sometimes it'll just be you and I talking. But I do think that we know so many interesting people that this is going to be a really fun show. So if you haven't already, subscribe, please. Follow us on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram. Share us everywhere else. Yeah. And we are also on Patreon. So as we start to build that, we'll have some more cool behind the scenes contact. Maybe some like too hot for TV. Yes. Too hot for YouTube on Patreon. Morgan gone deal. wild. Yeah, just Morgan screaming like a madman ripping his clothes off. 
If you want to see that, subscribe to the Patreon. There's going to be a lot of that footage. If you don't want to see that, subscribe to the Patreon and then tell us what you want to see. We'll do anything That's for right. money. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Morganlappin at gmail.com. You just send your requests and I will assist you and make your dreams come true. <laughs> make your dreams come true. That's what we're here for. Yeah. But no, I thought, I think that this is going to be a really great um, and continue to be. I think I, I love what we've done already. Yeah. And, uh, and don't forget, we have... I think up to nine official episodes, longer episodes with guests. So, yeah. And that is on the YouTube. Yeah. We have a Facebook page. We have an Instagram page. Yeah. Go follow boo, 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 boo. us. But we're going to be here. We're going to be here more regularly for you is our point. Yes. We're going to be here um, three times a week. Uh, I'm really excited to do those more regularly, a little smaller. So turn us on on your commute after you get to the office, lunchtime, whatever. We're going to be covering art news in the city going to be covering uh what we're doing here throwing shows uh and basically you know whatever in everything anything and everything creative related what are you been doing uh, what's your latest project my latest project besides well, the collage I, show that's I've coming up march chipping away at this piece that's 10 foot five um it Damn. was finished three years ago but it's i haven't been able to mount it onto the board so it's a gigantic collage, and I'm mounting it on something called Sintra. Sintra is kind of like PVC piping, plastic. It's like plastic sheet, yeah. And, but like uh, a plastic... Um, sausage free. Like plywood, almost. It is, but it's thin. So what I have to do is I have to construct, uh, you know, fabricate wood behind it to keep the structure so it doesn't bend and sway because it's, it's a very thin... Uh, piece, but um, right now it's in two pieces in my place because that's the only way I can get it out of my house. Is yeah, it's, it's too huge. big. So uh, and you're doing I, that ten foot collage, and it's still all the little tiny pieces. That oh take. my god, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of pieces. It's actually on my Instagram, Morgan underscore Jesse underscore Lappin. This um, makes me feel like um, ha like glad I do digital work. Because it scares me when I see that. Like, imagine a really strong breeze comes by. Oh, no, it's couldn't happened it just, to me like, before. Couldn't it just blow apart all of your work for like a year? Well, I, I lay out thousands of images sometimes. So uh, I've realized that it's a really bad idea to open up the windows when you're doing this because they can all blow off. <laughs> yeah. Number one collage artist uh, nemesis is the wind. Yeah, yeah. You know, it would be cool to be able to do live collage outdoors, but that would be, that'd be tough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> collage, collage gets kind of a, a tough break sometimes. Like, why do you why do you think that is? Why do you think that people? Um, I think it's for a lot of different reasons. I think it's kind of like the uh, punk rock medium. You know, I, I that's find cool. that a lot of people who, you know, go to art school and are talked down to by their advisors. A lot of people turn to collage and kind of like, you know, <laughs> give their teacher the finger with that. And I think that's really cool. Really, you think that's kind of what's happening? I've heard I, I've, I've heard, heard stories throughout stories? the years. Yeah. But me, That's myself, wild. I've never been to art school. Uh, I picked it up because I just wanted to find a way to create original designs for a clothing line I was working on with a friend, and I just decided to go collage. Is that why? That's probably why, then, is because it's more accessible. It's, like, easier to pick up and start doing than, like, oil painting. Is that maybe why? For Although me, not really anymore. For me, it was, again, it all, always started therapeutic. Um, you know, again, the hunt, the collection of the publications, the organizing of everything, putting I think things that's in separate so cool folders. About it. That's what um, I love about it. You know, it's like the same thing we were talking about Sean Ritz's show. Uh, Sean Ritz was like a commercial illustrator who would go and take these mainstream publications, these big things like, you know, Entertainment Weekly or whatever, cut them up and then make new illustrations with those cut up pieces and then and then actually get those illustrations bought by those same magazines. Yeah, no, so, he was, so that, that's, that's pretty amazing. He was reselling back the cuts to the magazines that he got them out of, which I think is the coolest thing ever. I love that. Yeah. It, that's a real it, artist, right? You know, that's like, it's like, that's so creative being able to like take that, remix it up to a point that they buy it back. Yeah, he's a cool dude. And he has a, a really colorful and interesting background. We're going to have him uh, back on Lucky Time at some point so we can talk more collage. But That'd be cool. Like, in my case, I usually, he uses, um, you know, more updated magazines. I always had this aesthetic where I would, of course, stick to vintage. And it's just mm. like everyone has a very different aesthetic for collage. Uh, but I've just been drawn to, like, 
encyclopedias is what started me off when I first started making collage. Yeah, I remember having my first set of encyclopedias. World Book Encyclopedia, the uh, green and tan books. I don't know if anybody has those or remembers those, but uh, that's where it started for me. I was I got a, like a I spent fifty bucks once and I got like a box of Scientific American or magazines oh, from like the fifties. Ooh. I was just doing a ton of collages with those back in the day, but I like vintage stuff too. There's one set of magazines I never had the opportunity to get my hands on, but they're called Omni. You know those? Omni? Like old sci-fi, I think. Huh. Yeah, you got to look those up. The images are amazing. Mm. That's very cool. So yeah, we're closing down. Almost. Yeah, we're getting we close. got four minutes left. Four minutes left. I hope you've been uh, having a great time with us. <laughs> But uh, yeah, this is this is new to us. This is our first morning show, so we're still uh, smacking the cobwebs out of our heads. Yeah, and, I know. Uh, I'm still drinking my coffee. I'm like eyeing my uh, my cold brew over there. Yeah, I still think I'm in a dream. You probably are, actually. Nice. So yeah, but I'm that's... gonna start floating out of my chair in a second. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that, I think we covered all the big news uh, going on. We got World Collage Day coming up, March yep. ele- May 11th, May 11th. Saturday, May 11th, mm-hmm. probably going to be like five to eight. Something like that. Something around Keep there. your but eyes out yeah, for we'll, it. Yeah, we'll be advertising. Uh, we're also going to have um, some open, uh, open gallery hours here from noon to five, uh, Monday through Friday for the first and last week of March. Uh, which is coming up very soon. So we hope to see you guys come back, come hop by the studio. Say hello. Yay. All right. All right. Well, thank you for tuning in. We're going to see you sometime soon, like yeah. this Wednesday. Yeah. We'll see you Wednesday. Bye. Bye. <laughs> thank you for listening to Lucky Time Explosion. Watch the video edition on Patreon, a green screen extravaganza experience available exclusively to official Lucky Timers. This episode was recorded at Sola Studios in Manhattan, New York, helping artists make cool shit since 2016.